boy hey welcome back it's your girl shay i am back filming if you hear anything in the background is hide i look i'm trying to find the lighting trying to find my grass in this new space that i currently have for those who don't know i currently just moved um that'll be talked about later in another video but in this video today i'm going to sit down and do my makeup um i don't have a whole lot of time so I'm gonna try to make it quick for you. Um, but yeah, so today we're gonna be talking about none other than millennial dating and what that kind of looks like right now. Um, for those who don't know, I just turned 30. I turned 30 um, exactly a month ago. So today's December, with January 21st, I turned 30 December 21st. So. But yeah, so I'm now 30. I am a millennial. I am a, I don't think I'm an older millennial. I think I'm a regular, you know, grande size millennial maybe, but a millennial still nonetheless. So, but more in particular today, we're gonna be talking about attachment styles. Um, for those who do not know, I'm gonna go ahead and start doing my makeup because I'm just sitting here talking, right? Um, for those who do not know, I am a graduate student. I am graduating in May, um, but I am in school for counseling. I'm in school for um, therapy. So what we're going to talk about today is some things that I have really been learning, not only through class, but like self-talk type situations. And I do have a glass table that I'm on right now. Um, so if you hear anything like rattling that's probably the table but yeah so yeah i i've recently been learning about attachment styles and i'm gonna tell y'all why your relationship's not working what is going on why why everything that you do in relationships just seems to fall to the ground and burn okay because i learned this and i feel like it's only important to share this information first things first you need to know about dating you need to understand your attachment style if you do not understand your attachment style when it comes to relationships even when it comes to friendships I feel like you're doing yourself a disservice so if you don't know there are uh, three attachment styles what well, there's three four kind of so one you're secure two you're avoidant three you are anxious and then the fourth one which is not well, a whole lot of people aren't really the fourth one um but it is called um it's an anxious attach anxious avoidant attachment style so it's like a you know a dual attachment style so if you think you got superpowers and you think you're both then you know who am i to tell you differently i'm not your therapist so, but anyways, so when it comes to attachment styles, it's important to know that these attachment styles not only come from when you were a child, it also um, tends to develop over time as an adult. That's what, something that a lot of people don't really understand. They think the people who do understand the attachment styles, it only really comes from your childhood. And that is not the case. I don't like how this is going. So we're just going to. do this I'm trying not to spill it on myself either because I already got clothes on Just a little bit more on this side. but yeah so that's that so the thing is when it comes to these attachment styles they kind of change over time so just a quick synopsis or a quick little run through of what each attachment style is the Secure attachment style is um, basically they're secure in their feelings, they're secure in themselves, they're secure in their place in life um, with another person or just in general. Uh, a person who has a t an anxious attachment is just that. You're actually anxiously attached to um, people, things, um, and just situations in your life. So you tend to sometimes act out a little bit more um irrationally i guess it would be the 
the term that I put that in quotation marks is the actual term for that but there's no reason for us to really get into that that's something that if y'all really want to know more about I can really talk about but for the sake of this video um but yeah so you act out um and you're these are the people that you think that needs a lot of reassurance right so if you're a person who needs a lot of reassurance I'm not diagnosing you but you know this could be you um so yeah and then you have people who are avoidant and those people are those people who are more or less saying things like oh you know I'm not looking for nothing serious I, we're just talking like those people who take a long time to commit we all know those people I've experience those people and we're going to get into that so for myself personally i'm going to use myself as an example because i don't know y'all i don't know what y'all got going on i don't know what y'all life look like but i know what mine look like so with that being said i'm gonna say this so i am a anxious uh attachment person like i i'm not like i'm not like the type of like, like i'm just uh, you know on you like i'm attached onto you but I, I do have a tendency to be a little bit more anxious, like think, have thoughts of like, um, you know, that this person, you know, care about me, and, you know, stuff like that. Like, and also I think about anxious attached people. They are very, and this is a very important thing. They are very, um, they can sense changes in their partner or, um, uh, whoever, the relationships you have with that person, they can sense those changes. Very, They're very sensitive to those changes. They're very sensitive to um, changes of people's behaviors and changes of people's mood. And it's because they, they had to be that way, which however that made them, whether from their childhood or just their dating history. Um, so yeah, so that's a tidbit of information. So also the people who are anxiously attached always tend to go to people who are avoidant um the majority of the world is actually a secure attachment but people um people who are anxiously attached they naturally gravitate to what's negative and what's, what's not the same to them so there's it's easier to find people who are avoidant in the in the dating field because there's a reason why they're not in relationships you know there's a reason why they don't want nothing serious like that's just that's just how they are um so yeah it may seem like there's a lot of people who just be like oh I don't want nothing serious I don't know especially in this current world that we live in this current dating scene that we kind of found ourselves in so so yeah so the reason why you're you being an attachment person, you be having an anxious attachment. The reason why your relationship is not working out is because you keep dating men or women with avoidant attachment styles, and you're anxious. An anxious person needs, you know, they need someone to be secure. So they need someone. They need reassurance. And people who are avoidant, guess what? They don't give you. Yeah, that's right. Reassurance. You're not getting the reassurance that you so deeply desire from someone who is avoidant. So you are choosing the wrong partner. That's the problem. There is nothing wrong with you. Well, it's something wrong with your choosing choices, right? But there's nothing like actually wrong with you as a person. The person that you keep, the people you keep choosing are avoidant. You have to really notice the patterns in the people that you're dating. Just like if you're an avoidant person and you keep getting attached to people or you keep dating people who are anxious and you're calling these people needy, that person just can't love you. But that, that person just don't receive love and affection in the same way that you do. So you know what you need to do? leave them alone and if you avoid it you probably need to search a little bit within yourself to figure out what it is that's making me this way go to therapy i'm not your therapist okay um so go to therapy and figure out what's going on you know i think that'd be the best the best route that a person in that situation could go to but still there's still those people who are just really just avoidant and 
They don't want anything serious. And I don't want to say they prey on people who are anxiously attached because people who are anxiously attached, they will stay. And not only will they stay, they come back. So if you ever ask yourself, why can't I leave this person alone? Why can't I? Why? <laughs> like, it's in, it's, it's in you. And that's not, it's not on you for real. Like, it's in you, it's not on you. So don't beat yourself up about it. Just try your best to... You know, I don't want to say ignore them, but try your best to do what you think is in your best interest. Me, I'm going a, I'm to a ignore you. Um, so that's what's in my best interest. I don't know what's personally in your best interest. But I can tell you what I'm going to do. <clears throat> and I ain't going to fool with you. Well, my adult 30-year-old self is not going to fool with you. Back in the G, I keep saying that now that I'm 30, but back in the G... I probably would fool with you. I probably would have would, would, would stayed around because I was dumb, you know. But now, um, if I'm dating somebody and they're just like, oh, well, you know, let's just be friends. I'm not doing that because we're not going backwards. That's not what I came here to do, big dog. Like, that's not what I came here to do. But you are able, if you're an anxious person, you are able to get to that point of, I would like to, I'll, I'll call it like freedom, I guess is what a good term would be for it. You are able to get to a nice freedom point and be non-anxious, you know, like you, you are able to get there and able to reach that. It's just going to take time and patience and, you know, not only counseling, but like, you know, if you don't, counseling is not your thing, just a real deep dive into the person that you really are and the things that you really want. Because if you continue to choose people who are exact opposite of what you want, then you're not going to get very far in life. And that is literally just a fact. You can't continue to, you know, say you want something and then continue to date people who are the exact opposite of what you really want. So the importance is to find out the type of person that you are. And one of the books that I had to read or I am going, I'm going to continue reading I'm like um, midway through it because we only had to read a certain part of it for class. But the book that I'm reading, like I want to read the whole thing through is called Attached. And these are some of the things that they kind of talk about and, and the importance of knowing your attachment style when it comes to dating. Because like I said, you're just going to be continuously in the same space if you continue to do the same thing. And who wants to be there, you know? And I wish personally that I would have known this earlier, like why my relationships aren't working out, why this is happening. I mean, the book doesn't go in to choose like why you're choosing these separate people, but you can do a little self-discovery and try to figure out like what what is drawing me to this. Is it the fact that, you know, that they're halfway there? Because the thing is, is why people who are, anxiously attached to, um, excuse me, avoiding people. The reason why they are so attached is because uh, people who are avoidant, they, they give a little take back, give a little take back. So they're not, it's the idea that they're going to come back and you get conditioned to think that this person loves you because of this behavior that they're displaying. And it's, it's not love. It's just, I mean, I'm not going to say it's not love because I don't want to talk about how other people love other, how other people display their love. But the thing is that, you know, I learned and I want you guys who are genuinely interested in this conversation to take away from this is that if someone, someone can love you with all their heart, someone can adore you. Someone could think that you're the world to, to them, but the problem is if that person is not going to love you the way that you want to be loved and you have actually told them that, you know, this is not how I want to be loved. Like someone could really love you. Like I, I had a whole video prior, like this is it's, it's, it's deep in there. And this, um, cause this is in a little, uh, what do you call it? A little playlist. So I had a video that's deep in this playlist. You can, I can probably tag it if I remember, but I was talking about my toxic ex and the thing is is that 
there's never not a time where I don't think that that man loved me. I think that man loves me to this day. He actually told me yesterday that he does. Um, but that's a different story. We're going to talk about that later. But, um, that these people, these, these type of people can love you. It's just like, is that the type of love that you're really willing to receive? And if it's not, then you just need to reevaluate how you want to be loved and how you want that to be displayed to you because you can't continue to, you know, if you, if your end goal is to be married and have this life for yourself, you can't continue to do the same behavior. So it's just like, you really just need to do some self-reflecting and find out what's work, what's working for you and what's not working for you. Cause right now, since you're watching this video, whatever you got going on, ain't working for you. I don't know if you know that. I'm not sure if you were aware of that topic, but you're here for a reason. Hey bestie, how you doing? You know, I love that you're here. I love that you came to visit me, but I'm just really trying to tell you the truth. Like the reason why your love is not working out is because you keep choosing people that's not within your attachment style. You keep choosing people who don't love you the way you want to be loved. Not saying that that person doesn't love you. I'm never going to say that. I'm never going to, you know, talk about the way someone else's love. This looks crazy. I'm never going to talk about how somebody else's love. But what I'm going to say to you is that if that's not what you want, then you need to make that clear. If that's the type of love you want to receive, then you might need to figure, figure out what it is that you do want. You might need to dig deeper and find out what's your attachment style. You know, if you find yourself blowing up and not being filled with people like to call it passion, but it's also a little rage in there um, in situations with partners, then you you may be someone who is a whose attachment style is more anxious, you know, and if you want to change it, then you have to do the work to change it. Nobody can change that but you. Nobody can change that but you. So it just kind of like figure out what works best for you. And the thing is, is that studies show that people who are anxious, anxiously attached, they work better with people who are um, secure. All people work better secure. Secure, secure people, people who are secure in relationships and well, have a secure attachment and not a person has a secure attachment. Those relationships end up working the best. The people who who have a anxious attachment, um, those relationships, anxious attachments and a secure attachment, those relationships can work, it just needs work. The relationship that does not tend to work as favorably is people who are avoided and people who are secure. Avoidant did not work, like this is your avoidant, the avoidant does not work well with any real relationship. Um, not, well, not relationship, but any real attachment style. They don't, they don't work well with other attachment styles. And it is because they get close to people and then they decide that they find something wrong with them. It's like the Phantom X thing. Like, and I'm not saying that this is a masculine thing, but I know we all know a guy who, who was just in love with their ex. I know one right now. Okay. They're just, they're just in love with their ex. They think about all the good things. They think about all how, you know, how good it was, but they really fail to think about bad because there's a reason why y'all broke up. So they're really bad about the phantom ex or the avoidant attachment style. And they also are really bad about, um, they're really bad about just finding little things. If you ever, if you're ever with somebody and you start finding like little things. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about, oh, they got kids. Like, nah, nah, nah. Like that's something to kind of be like, mm, okay, whatever, you know, whatever folks do, whatever makes you happy personally. I'm, I don't necessarily, you know, I don't, I don't judge. But, um, if you are finding like, oh, I don't like the way this person breathes. This person breathes 32 times in two seconds. Like, I don't like that. I don't like the way the person blinks. I don't like the way this person chew their food. Like when you start finding nitpick things like about them, you may be avoiding. And I know that we all have like attributes that we are like attracted to. So I'm not talking about those type of things. Like if you're a person who don't like somebody with small teeth, okay, 
You know, you know, like talking with tiny teeth. Okay, if you don't like somebody who is like, I don't know, you don't prefer someone who's who's bald. Okay, that's your that's your personal preference. But I'm talking about the tiny things that like, like oh, this person chew their food too much before they eat it, or oh, this person eat too slow. Like I can never be with somebody who eats that slow. Like I'm talking about those types of things. Like not like attributes that you find attractive. So let's be clear here. Like not, you could be very particular and not be avoidant, but most people who are avoidant are particular about things that don't even matter for real. They're particular about like, like, I don't know. Like I can never date somebody because when they put their tissue on the rack, they put it right side up and not left side bottom. You know what I'm saying? Like, those type of things but you're already dating that person you're already kind of like with that person and things seem to be going good with that person and then out of nowhere you just start thinking about things that you just don't like about them like just random things that they don't really matter for real you know like I don't like like oh yeah I love her curly hair but I don't like that her left curl curls inward like like let's be for real like those types of things so like like I said there's no problem with being particular but just don't be weird you know and if you don't like somebody that's fine let them go that's my biggest advice if you don't like them being avoided let them go and for my my people who are very secure well anxiously attached you don't gotta stay if you talk to somebody who's avoiding that and they're not loving you the way that you want to be loved I hate to break it to you, but they, they probably won't ever be able to give you the love that you want. And that's from your big cousin. So you might need to pack your stuff and leave. But only if you want to, you know. I'm not here to tell people what to do with their lives. I'm only here to like, you know. I'm only here until, until, mm, yeah, you know, so I'm just, I'm just here, you know, I'm just here for you, you know, I'm just here to give you the advice, give you the education, the things that I learned so that you can use the information to do whatever you want with it. I'm just, just here, you know, I feel like that this is very useful information. I feel like that you could use this information. You can use this information however you like, okay? But I feel like you deserve better, right? You deserve to know why things aren't working. And that's what I'm here for. I want all my little cousins to be thriving and doing well in life, okay? So yeah, you know, I want you to real Sit back and think about your relationships. What it, what's it, what it is about your relationships is not working. I just put this bronzer all over my face, but it's fine. I want you to realize what is not working. What is working? And what can you do to make things work better? Because right now, you're here with me. And people who are secure, study shows, like I said, it's, it's the best for you, you know? Am I secure? No, so I, 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 don't, I don't get no play for saying that, you know what I'm saying? What I am saying is that you need to find something that balances you. You need to find someone who is going to be able to speak to you the way you want to be speak to, love you the way you want to be loved, because everyone deserves it. Every single one of us deserves it. But I'm about to finish up so I can focus, because I got somewhere I really need to be. So I'll be right back when I'm done. So my makeup is done. So overall, the story is you deserve someone that loves you. You're deserving. You're worthy. All I ask from you now is to find what works best for you. But if you like this video, you want more videos like this, please let me know in the comments below. Um, but I got to go because they're here to deliver my sofa. Okay. So talk to you guys later. Bye.